Hello, I'm DJ from Fan Minute Podcast, and uh, you know it's getting kind of rough. We've all been stuck in our house for a while, and um, one of the big things that you know, if you're a toy collector, you know, I'm sure you're feeling the same thing is you can't just run to the store and hunt pegs right now because a couple of things: half the stores are closed, uh, and you still they're not stocking toys. No one's shipping toys out right now. It's there's nothing out there. Um, so I figured it'd be a good time to uh, go back and what we were able to get at so far this year and go over the top five figures to hit stores in 2020 so far. Um, this is going to be just your average action figures, no sideshows or hot toys or statues or anything high end like that. You know, your 30 ish kind of dollar figures and, um, figured, you know, kind of help take the edge off, you know, talk about stuff. We were able to pick off a peg and, you know, maybe later on we'll do a stuff, the stuff coming out, but, uh, yeah, so here we go. Let's go uh, number five. Okay, number five, I had a tie. It was kind of kind of tricky. So there's the McFarlane Johnny Cage uh, Mortal Kombat figure that just came out. Um, I have one of those actually on order. Uh, it's uh, stuck at a GameStop right now. My GameStop is closed in the state of Massachusetts. So I pre-ordered it, came in. It's just sitting there in the back. I can't get a hold of it right now. Um, but the thing is really nice. Uh, Johnny Cage does not have the best history of figures. There was a, I remember a G.I. Joe, Johnny Cage, when I was a kid, it looked, you know, he had like uh, the bandoliers and knives and stuff, didn't really look like Johnny Cage. And you had like the uh, Jazzwares six inch ones from Mortal Kombat 9 that was not a very good figure at all. That whole line kind of sucked. Um, but this McFarlane one is is next level. Uh, the best thing with this is he's got the, uh, the uh, you know, the jacket on, the detail in the shoes and the... Um, shin guards and everything. I want to put the picture up right here. Uh, I mean, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous figure. All the paint application is real nice. But the coolest thing is he comes with a Johnny Cage action figure of his own. So you can buy a toy who has a toy. How do you go wrong with that? Uh, another tie slash honorable mention is um, the uh, WWE Elite Series 73, I think it was, from Mattel, the uh, Kari Sane. Uh, anyone who doesn't watch wrestling, Kari Sane is a uh, uh, Japanese wrestler. Who kind of dresses like a Final Fantasy VIII character, which is kind of cool. She's got the big pirate hat and everything like that, and so the figure's really cool. I uh, throw a self for that too. Uh, you know, you have the uh, the pirate jacket and the hat and the wheel and everything, and it's just it's cool because it's a wrestling figure, but it looks almost like a video game character at the same time. Uh, and whenever they do the female figures, they're few and far between in the Elite series, uh, but they really kind of go all out. So this one was one of the uh, the better ones that come out in a while. So that's that's my number five. Okay, number four. Um, number four, we're going to go with the Jedi Revan Black Series figure from Hasbro. Uh, anyone's going, who's Revan? I don't, he, what movie is he in? Well, Revan is a character um, from Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which was an Xbox game that came up back in the day. Uh, possibly the best Star Wars, no, it is the best Star Wars game. Um, Fallen Order notwithstanding, that was a very good, but KOTOR is the best game Star Wars wise there is. Uh, possibly one of the best role playing games ever, too. So if you haven't played it yet and you have time hop on steam on your computer and uh, download it's like five bucks well, well worth it but this is a wicked nice figure this was a GameStop exclusive from the uh, gaming greats line um, the cool thing about this figure is that um, it's it's for the most part basically a repaint of the of the Sith Revan because you get to um, choose your path in the game dark, dark, light or dark so this is the Jedi end of them uh, you get the purple lightsaber but the paint application is awesome on this thing you get the copper breastplate which is nice. Hasbro's been real good about making the metals look like metal. It's not just some flat color. They've been using the metallic paint. And the fact that the hood is like a separate piece from the helmet really makes it stand out too. Uh, I'll put a still up too because it's hard to probably see on the toy. Um, as you can see, this thing's just a gorgeous, gorgeous figure. And it's a character you don't get a lot of. You don't get a lot of Revan stuff. You get barely any of it. So it was nice to have. Plus the box. The artwork on this box with the purple and the black is sharp, man. It's killer. It's almost worth 20 bucks just for the box. Um, yeah, so uh, this thing, if you don't have one, you're going to have to hit the Ebays because uh, it was, for the most part, all the game stuff, I think, only got their pre-orders because uh, they just didn't make any extras. It was a wicked limited run. But uh, yeah, we're going to go uh, Jedi Revan, Black Series figure number four. Okay, so number three. So um, I figured I had to throw a Legends figure in here somewhere, even though it's not something that I personally collect. Uh, I did the Toy Biz ones back in the day. And the rule was when the new ones came out with the with the wife was that no more Marvel figures because I had all of them. It was scary the amount I had. 
Um, so I'm going to pick one. Uh, there were some good ones this year. Uh, I really like the Havoc and Polaris uh, X-Factor 2-pack that came out. But it's a 2-pack that goes against the rules. So I'm going to go probably... It was tough. Like I was torn between uh, Doom and Thing from the Fantastic Four Wave. Uh, put both those up here. But I'm going to end up going Doom. Uh much as I love the thing, he's a bigger, chunkier figure that I like. I like getting as much plastic as I can for my 20 bucks, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, I've always had a big thing for the tank characters, too, like uh, Colossus and Juggernaut and stuff like that. But Doom is probably my second favorite Marvel bad guy behind Juggernaut. So um, it's a gorgeous figure. As you can see, uh, I said Hazard's just there. They're just, it's a slam dunk, almost everything they do now. Um, he was really hard to find, uh, but... I had him in my hand like three or four times. It really it took a lot, a lot to put him back on the peg, which more than any other Marvel Legends figure has in a while since probably the Rogue one that came up for that uh, that Deadpool wave back in the day. So uh, I'm gonna be going with uh, going with Doom for uh, number three. Okay, so number two. So tie what we do we break if you've ever listened to the the pod we break a lot of rules we don't even even if there are rules we still break them but i'm going to do a 2a 2b um if you were a kid back when i was a kid 90s uh you were a turtles kid and there was no telling me you weren't every especially every boy was a ninja turtles fan i mean just it's is what it is uh and when 90 came out and the turtles movie came out people lost their goddamn minds you couldn't fathom you know the ninja turtles being in live action as, a, as an eight or nine year old so last year gamestop had the neca turtle figures in the six inch scale and uh this year they did splinter and shredder uh movie figures six inch scale uh these things are glorious they're shredder they're splinter um i'll put the stills up so splinter you have the ooze container uh, the fur sculpt is real nice. You never know with furry characters. Like, there's been some beast figures that have gone a little too furry on. It's kind of hard to get that balance. Uh, the Splinter sculpt is really nice. Um, the Soft Goods Cloak is always a good thing with him. I don't like the hard rubber ones that some of the uh, cartoon figures have had over the years. Or even the molded on ones. It just doesn't seem to work. Uh, and he comes with Mikey's Nunchucks that he uses to throw Splinter, uh, Splinter Shredder off the top of the building of the dumpster. So, uh, this was a cool one. Um, Shredder also is no joke. Shredder might be slightly the better one, but uh, the metal fleck and the paint on his uh, suit is nice. Uh, you can't see here. Uh, you can see it. I'll put the picture up, like I said. Uh, the gauntlet sculpts are really nice. Face sculpt is really good. Um, he does have his uh, extra set of hands and the pike. So, you can recreate the Shredder with the pike getting thrown off the top of the building into the tr uh, garbage truck. Um, I think Neck even has a diorama set where you can kind of rig that up a little bit. But um, the turtle line is almost complete now. I think we're getting uh, Casey Jones and Raph in a trench coat two pack pretty soon. So once I get Casey Jones, I'll be good. I mean, I'll have all the turtle figures. I can stop buying those. But um, these are kind of uh, near and dear to my heart kind of thing. So I'm definitely going uh, these two beautiful things right here, number two. So number one's going to be pretty special to, to beat these. But um, there's actually something even cooler this year. So it's get into that okay so probably my favorite thing that's happened this year in action figures so far in 2020 is uh, McFarlane getting the DC Comics license uh, if you listen to the show you know I'm a huge DC guy and McFarlane Toys is one of my favorite toy companies um, so these things are great uh, this one right here is the Harley one um, I just grabbed one off the stack uh, Harley is not my number one but just to show you the quality of these figures, she's super nice. This is animated series Harley Quinn. None of that movie crap. Um, no pink and, you know, just classic old school animated series Harley. Uh, this wave was chock full of awesome figures. You could have really picked any of them. Um, but one thing McFarlane does better than anybody is takes this one thing that you never know you wanted and makes a toy out of it and goes, here, here's a toy, buy me. And um, much like my Johnny Cage, um, I do own, I had this figure on pre-order for me. It arrived at the GameStop. It just never made it uh, into my hand before all this stuff hit. Um, but I've held one in my hand. Um, this thing is great. And it's the Hellbat from McFarlane Toys. Uh, 
this thing, this suit existed like on three or four panels of a comic. Uh, if you know what the hell that is, the picture's right there. It looks like Batman Beyond on steroids or Venom, if you read DC Comics. Uh, but when you hold this thing and actually see it in your hand, it's impressive, man. This thing probably weighs about a pound and a half or so, which is a lot for a toy. Because you know, I like the bigger chunky. I like to get my, my 20 bucks worth of plastic in the package. Uh, he's got the giant bat wings with the hinges on them, much like the old spawn capes. They kind of, you know, took a cue from those old spawn capes from the 90s. And uh, he's just, man, he's impressive. He's almost like getting a small statue for 20 bucks. And that's something McFarlane's doing a lot of. Uh, there's a Superman in armor too. That's really nice, and it's it's close. But you know, you always always go Batman when there's a tie. Batman always wins out. And um, if this is any indication of what's to come between these and like um, Azrael is coming out soon, and you know, you, God, you could start getting some crazy stuff. Like I can't wait till he makes a Dark Side figure, or oh my God, Parallax, Hal Jordan. I mean, uh, the, the possibilities are endless, endless possibilities. So. Definitely going with the Hellbat from McFarlane Toys. And um, it, it was an easy call for me. It's just one of those things where you saw it and you're like, oh, this is, easy. you know, you had to have it. So so that's our top five toys so far that have come out in 2020. Uh, I said, hope you liked the video. Um, if you do, just, uh, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Don't beat me up too bad. I'm still kind of new at this. I'm, I'm trying to get the hang of it. But uh, uh, let me know what your favorite toy is of the year. And... Um, we're probably going to do a, maybe we'll do a, a follow-up with some of the stuff that's not out yet that we can pre-order. Some stuff we're waiting for because of all this pandemic stuff. Because I just feel talking about the toys that you uh, can't have in your hand yet or on your shelf uh, kind of helps take the edge off a little bit. So, uh, so I said, and if you want to listen to uh, the show, the Fan Men Podcast, you can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, right here on YouTube, um, I'm back putting the back catalog up and I'm putting the new episodes out as they come out. And also we have the show on SoundCloud and Stitcher and Apple and Google and Alexa speakers, everywhere else you get your show. And uh, if there's some place you do get your shows and you want it and it's not there, drop me a line at fmen37 on Twitter and I'll try to figure a way to get it on there. So thanks a lot, everybody, and um, happy hunting.